Hello world, welcome back to the Razor RC. It's time for another RC Basics where we're going to be talking about RC shocks. Probably uh, one of the most common things people ask about is uh, what can you do with an RC shock? Like what are the different tuning things, the adjustments you can make, how do they affect the way the car actually drives? So we will be talking about that. This is a Traxxas Ultra Shock. It comes on all the Traxxas 110 scale two-wheel drive and most of their four-wheel drive vehicles as well. So a Traxxas Slash, a Bandit, a Rustler, a Stampede, things like that will all come with these shocks so they're plastic body shocks pretty simple things and we're just going to be using this as an example but pretty much apply to any uh, shock out there that you might have on your RC car whether it's you know 10 scale or 5th scale or whatever so uh, first off we're going to go through the different parts of the shock uh, what they're actually called and we'll talk about uh, what they actually do and then uh, talk about what changes you might want to make uh, if you want to make changes to the way your car actually drives so this is a shock up top you got the plastic shock cap sometimes they're aluminum you got this little pivot ball or hollow ball up top uh, it doesn't come on all shocks so I'm going to just use a little spacer uh, up top to mount it to your shock tower uh, the gray plastic piece here is the shock body uh, obviously that holds the shock fluid uh, you've got the spring the shock spring You've got the shock rod end here on the bottom, so that is threaded uh, or sometimes pressed onto the shock shaft. Uh, you got the spring perch or shock cup here on the bottom, and then uh, you got a preload spacers up here up top. So some of them use like a threaded style. As an example, we've got my Kyosha here where you basically have a shock uh, adjuster that you can wind down or wind up to add preload onto the spring, but uh, some of them use a spacer like this that you can remove. So we'll pull this thing apart and kind of show you uh, real quick how it comes apart. So basically the shock cup usually just fitted onto the shock rod end. You can pull it off. Spring comes off, of course. And then up top, there's usually like a, a spring retainer up here. How uh, that can slide up and down uh, depending on whether you have preload spacers or not. So preload spacers are removable. You can just pull them off or snap them on. Uh, you can add preload spacers. So uh, the, what that actually does is just add additional tension onto the spring. So it pre-compresses the spring a little bit. Now every spring out there has what's called a spring rate. So something like this might be, you know, four pounds per inch, something like that. And what that means is that uh, for every inch you compress it, it's pushing back the four pounds of force. So sometimes they're in kilograms, centimeters, sometimes they're in newton meters, uh, sometimes they're in pound inches. So that's what that means. If you compress an inch, it's pushing back with that amount of force. So for example, maybe four pounds. Usually they come in different uh, spring tensions, uh, spring race. You know, if you want something a little bit stiffer, you want something a little bit lighter. Um, but on the vehicle itself, you can always add preload spacers to pre-tension it and make it feel a little bit stiffer uh, if that's what you're looking for, or remove them, obviously, to make it a little bit lighter. Now, removing the shock cap typically just threads on, and then usually the shock body has like a little hex here if you want to you know, put a tool on there to tighten or loosen it. can help, but inside the shock cap, sometimes you have what's called a bladder. So in this example, See if we can pull this thing out. You have a little rubber bladder. Uh, basically, it's just fitted into the top of the cap and it provides two purposes. First is a seal, so it goes in against the shock body and basically provides a seal so it doesn't leak out the top. Um, also provides uh, a, a pocket of air above the bladder. So when it's fitted inside the shock cap, you've got a little bit of air right there uh, that is above the shock oil and separate from the shock oil. So something to realize with shocks, a lot of people don't realize this, is when you got it fully extended like that, um, it's full of shock oil, right? Now, if you compress it, if you push the shock shaft into the body, well, it's obviously adding, you know, space uh, for that shock shaft inside the body. Now, the fluid inside does not really compress. So what happens when you try to compress that fluid by you know, pushing the shock shaft in? Well, it can't compress fluid. So what it's got to do is compress air. So this little bladder has a little pocket of air. And actually, when you compress the shock, it's actually compressing the air above the bladder, kind of squeezing that air in there. And then that's what actually compresses uh, due to that shock shaft going into the body. Some types of shocks are what's called emulsion, emulsion style. This is a bladder style, so it compresses the air inside or above that bladder. Some are emulsion style like this. You might find a shock which has a shock cap. 
with a screw in it like you see there. So that's actually a little hole that you can use to bleed out air. And uh, this emulsion style does not have a bladder inside the cap. What it actually does is you need to already have a little bit of air inside the shock and it just kind of mixes with the oil. So when you compress the shock, all those tiny little pockets of air already in the shock body uh, compress individually. And that's how it actually allows the shock shaft to go inside. Because otherwise, if you didn't have any air, you would have no way to uh, allow that shock shaft to get in there and you actually will end up with like hydro locks. So if you ever try to squeeze your shock and you can't, like it just stops, like you try to push on it and it's super hard, it doesn't actually compress, well that's what you actually have a little bit of hydro lock. Okay, now the last thing to talk about is what's actually inside the shock. Uh, you typically have oil, I've already drained all mine out, but you will have what's uh, called a shock piston. So this little black, uh, disc here inside uh, actually has little holes as you can see there's two little holes here that's actually what the fluid will go through when you're compressing the shock so it's full of oil you compress the shock it's actually squeezing oil through those holes they are forced to travel through that piston to the other side of the piston and that's actually what provides you that damping action so the shock oil actually slows down the shock absorbs energy, turns it into heat, and that's what actually does a little bit of damping, what they call or dampening. So uh, the shock piston is held on with uh, a little uh, E-clip like you might see there. Sometimes they have a little five and a half millimeter nut. So uh, different shocks have different styles, but uh, very common to have E-clips or a nut there threaded onto the shock shaft. Uh, in the bottom, there's actually a little bit of a cartridge. I don't, can't really get it completely out, but you can unscrew this bottom shock cap and you'll have a couple seals there, O-rings or X-rings. X-rings just provide two uh, layers of sealing o-rings provide one so you know they're pretty much the same thing and uh, interchangeable but x-rings like these blue x-rings on this tracks is a uh, shock just provide a little bit better sealing so that's pretty much the components of a shock one thing to realize with the shock is there are different uh, piston uh, types typically so uh, for example these are pistons from an Arma 6S vehicle and you can see there's different uh, size holes so the one on the right is uh, 8 by 1.4 millimeter holes and the one on the right I'm sorry one on the left is 8 by 1.4 and the one on the right is 8 by 1.2 millimeter piston so that's the size of the holes smaller holes in bigger holes and we'll explain what all that does so uh, that's pretty much what a shock is Now there's two main components that people, you know, sort of realize you've got a spring and shock oil. Uh, shock oil, thicker shock oils, just can provide a little bit more damping action. It actually will slow down the movement of the shock more. Lighter fluid will allow it to move quicker. So if you want, you know, over bumpier terrain, you probably want a little bit quicker action on uh, really flat or huge jumps. Maybe you want thicker fluid to basically uh, slow down that movement. So when you land that big jump, you're compressing that shock and slowing it down and not, you know, landing quite so hard. So you know, shocks are a tuning thing. You kind of have to figure out what's right for you, what's right for your vehicle, the weight, the type of terrain, the type of driving you're doing. But uh, that's one of the cool things about shocks is they are highly tunable. Now the spring performs a different function. What the spring actually does is push back against the shock. So obviously when the shock is on the vehicle, you got the shock cup here on the bottom. The shock spring is preventing or providing uh, like back force, basically, uh, you know, preventing you from compressing it as easily. So for the most part, a shock spring is going to do two things. One is going to keep the vehicle off the ground. If you didn't have a shock spring on there, you know, it would just flop. The tire would just compress all the way and, you know, it wouldn't actually hold it off the ground. Usually you want the vehicle to have about flat arms, uh, on the front and rear when the car is at rest like that that's just kind of a typical tuning uh you know suggestion that will work for most cars some vehicles you might want lower some vehicles you might want it higher but the shock spring uh, will affect how high or low the car actually sits when it's at rest so that's one function it does is basically keep the car off the ground uh, the second thing it does is obviously when you compress the shock when you push against it it is pushing back so it is providing force to prevent uh, that shock from collapsing now if you did not have 
you know oil in the shock you know you could compress it really easily but then it'll rebound really quickly so that's called rebound basically it is pushing back against you there's no if there's no oil in the shock and you just had a spring well it'd just be like a pogo stick it would just bounce up and down you know when you land a jump it would compress and just bounce back right away your car would just kind of pogo up and down like that so obviously uh you know shock oil and springs are both important but they provide different uh you know purposes the spring is to basically prevent the shock from collapsing and to push back when it's rebounding basically when it's extending and then the shock oil is actually what's slowing down the shock so shock oil will slow down the shock and then uh, also slow it down when it's rebounding or uh you know extending again so two different things you know typically um you're gonna adjust them for different uh, reasons. Let's see if I can get this shock spring off my <laughs> shock cap here. Um, so you know you might want to have stiffer springs if you if you just want a harder feel, basically uh, not you know compress as easily and shock oil, thicker shock oil. If you want to slow down that action, that will also affect how far it travels. So uh, under compression, you know the spring will provide some force to prevent it from collapsing, pre prevent it from compressing as far, but the shock oil will also slow it down while it's compressing. So we'll also, you know, slow down how far it actually goes. So if you want slow shock movement, you know, maybe you're on smoother surfaces, landing bigger jumps, uh, you want thicker fluid, then you go thicker on that. If you want quicker action, you want it to rebound and compress a little bit faster, that's when you would use lighter fluid. And the shock spring is the amount of stiffness or how much uh, you want to prevent it from actually going as far or rebounding uh, as quick. So yeah, those are the two main things for the shock uh, spring and the shock oils. A lot of people get them confused. They say, I want stiffer sh shocks and they don't, you know, they, they add thicker oil. Well, maybe that's not actually what you want. Thicker oil will slow down the shock, but it doesn't actually, quote, make it stiffer. A stiffer spring is what will actually make the shock feel a little bit harder or firmer uh, when you're drying the vehicle. The other thing I want to talk about are the shock pistons. Like we mentioned, uh, you can oftentimes find different shock pistons. Some vehicles even come with blank pistons where you can drill your own hole. So, you know, if you don't like the type of holes that uh, pattern that it comes with, you can actually adjust it. Now, what do these holes actually do? Well, smaller holes obviously will slow down the movement of that oil through the shock. So having smaller holes is similar to going up in shock fluid. Um, at slow movements, a shock with small holes and light fluid will you know, act about the same as a uh, shock with big holes and thicker fluid. So you can get it to you know, behave pretty similarly at slow movements, either with you know, light fluid and small holes or thick fluid you know, and thicker or bigger holes. Um, they will act the same, but where they will differ is actually in, the, in how the shocks what we call pack. So at slow movements, they might be the same, but at quick movements, like landing a huge jump, when you're compressing the shock like super fast, the small holes will actually pack up quicker and faster and be more difficult to flow that shock fluid through the shock piston, even though it's lighter than a thicker fluid. So uh, smaller holes will pack harder or more, or, you know, provide more pack on quick movements. Uh, bigger holes, thicker fluid will pack slower, I'm sorry, pack less. So actually allow the fluid to go through those bigger holes more, even though, you know, they might be the same otherwise. So really the shock piston with smaller holes is to, you know, control the pack on those quick, hard, big jumps, uh, landing the shock and like compressing that shock super fast. And then uh, that might be something when you want more pack. You might want less pack when you find it too hard. It's actually possible to go with two small holes like my Red Cat Kaiju or Team Association uh, Rival MT8. The holes are actually a little bit too small and not enough holes and it'll pack super hard, but it can actually break these plastic pistons. I've actually had them crack or they'll blow off the uh, Eclipse here up top. It'll just, or it'll just pack too fast It'll just hit really hard and then the vehicle just bounce off the ground rather than nice, smooth 
and absorbing that energy, you know, through its whole travel. So uh, that's what shock pistons do. Um, that's why they make different shock pistons or allow you to drill your own. You can control the pack or the instantaneous compression of that shock a lot more or differently than just, you know, adding a thicker or thinner shock fluid. So anyways, that's pretty much it for the uh, shocks. Hopefully that little tutorial on how they work, what the different components are, and then what you might want to adjust, uh, you know, is, is explained to you. If you have any more questions, throw them down in the comment section below. Uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you like videos like this. Hit the like, share, subscribe buttons as well, and look for more videos soon. Thanks for watching.